How's it going, guys? We have a past level question for immunology slash farm for step one. If you're studying for 2CK, obviously you need to be aware of your side effects. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L man underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group or channel down below. And that's start the clip. 56-year-old man, one week history of dark colored urine, no recent illnesses or infections. One year ago, he underwent a liver transplant for alcoholic hepatitis. An agent with which the following mechanisms of action is most likely responsible for its acute presentation. So dark colored urine refers to hematuria. No recent illnesses or infections could be relevant information for IgA nephropathy or post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. History of transplant just means he's going to be on immunosuppressants, which is obvious based on this question anyway. So, so let's just whip through the answer choices here. We'll go backwards. Choice the inhibition of dihydrofolate reductase. Wrong fucking answer. This first methotrexate. Methotrexate, first line DMARD for rheumatoid arthritis. Also first line oral agent for psoriasis, for systemic psoriasis, such as if the patient has arthritis or if they fail topicals. You should know methotrexate can cause pulmonary fibrosis, okay, restricted lung disease, as well as hepatitis and mucositis, which means mouth ulcers, and that's due to neutropenia. You can mitigate the toxicity of methotrexate with leucovorin rescue, which refers to folinic acid, not folic acid, folinic acid. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice D inhibition of mTOR, wrong answer. This refers to serolimus, okay? So serolimus, you need to know, does not decrease intracellular calcineurin. The net effect of giving serolimus is that we are going to decrease responsiveness to interleukin-2, which means decreased T-cell response. In terms of side effects, the most important is actually a negative, which is that it does not cause nephrotoxicity, which I'll explain the importance of that in a moment. It can cause dyslipidemia as well as diabetes, but as I said, US only doesn't really give a fuck about that. They just want you to know serolimus is not nephrotoxic, okay? In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice C inhibition of CD20, wrong answer. This refers to rituximab. CD20 on B cells, the way US Assembly will assess this, apart from raw mechanism of action, is uh, they say on one of the new NBMEs, dude is on rituximab, which the following is he most likely susceptible to. Answer is Bacterial pneumonia. I've seen students throw that question into the Telegram group chat quite a bit. Causes confusion. Well, if you're knocking out CD20 on B cells, you're going to be knocking out humoral immunity, antibody production, which you need to fight bacterial infections. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice B decreases intracellular calcium or in wrong answer. This refers to cyclosporin and tacrolimus, as I contrasted before cyrolimus. Cyrolimus does not decrease intracellular calcium or in. Both cyclosporin and tacrolimus are nephrotoxic. As I mentioned before, serolimus is not nephrotoxic. Okay, I've seen some challenging questions where they actually focus on the nephrotoxicity. So they do want you to know that detail, okay? And you need to know that uh, cyclosporin binds to cyclophyllin, tacrolimus binds to FK506. In addition to decreasing intracellular calcineurin, they're both going to decrease transcription slash responsiveness to IL2. Uh, so decreases T cell response similar to uh, serolimus. You need to know that cyclosporin, in addition, can cause gingival hyperplasia, can cause hypertension, and hypertrichosis, which means increased hair growth. And tacrolimus causes diabetes. That's the important info. I mentioned before that serolimus technically causes diabetes as well and dyslipidemia, but US simile doesn't really give a fuck. They just want you to know serolimus is not nephrotoxic, okay? Tacrolimus causes diabetes. They actually want you to know that. In addition to the fact that, as I just fucking said, cyclosporin and tacrolimus are both nephrotoxic. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Correct answer is alkylation of guanine N7, which refers to cyclophosphamide. Okay, so you need to know cyclophosphamide is an alkylating agent, and it can classically cause hemorrhagic cystitis, okay, bleeding from the bladder. Apparently, there's a toxic metabolite known as acrolein, uh, which can precipitate the hemorrhagic cystitis. You could be aware that the mitigating, the mitigating agent is called mesna, which has a thiol group, an SH group. Uh, which can be used to uh, decrease the risk of the hemorrhagic cystitis slash mitigate uh, the severity of it if the patient already has it. It's important to contrast the mesna with cyclophosphamide to the uh, leucovorin rescue, the uh, folinic acid that we give for methotrexate. Don't confuse those. You know the deal, Nick, to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.